Hey there, Deanna, Dr. Dan's here. We're going to change a filter on a TDI. Uh, no matter what vehicle, it's really important to have a, a good, clean fuel filter. If you have fuel restriction, that means that uh, the engine is being robbed for fuel. Fuel is where it lubricates the injection pump. No fuel, no lubrication, no go. And if you keep ignoring that, it can get really expensive, as in uh, ruining your injection pump. Almost all injection pump failures are from lack of fuel, which means a plug fuel filter, which means dirt, water, bacteria, which means that at some time you bought contaminated fuel. Uh, it's really important to buy good, clean, quality, filtered fuel. Uh, I think all fuel should be filtered to 10 microns or less. Most of it you buy at the gas station is only filtered to about 30 microns. That's pretty much just to uh, protect the, the meter and the pump. So anyhow, uh, we did another video about how to test for fuel restriction. And uh, now we're going to show you how to uh, replace the filter on a TDI. There's some uh, spring clamps here. I just use a, a pair of pliers to uh, manipulate those off. Uh, this is the outline, hence a little arrow that goes to the injection pump and this is the inline and I have some fancy pants pliers that aren't hard on the hose um, if you these are bi-diesel compatible hoses but if you that means the liner of the hose is bi-diesel compatible if you damage the hose then it's gonna leak and it's gonna rot and uh, and not be bi-diesel compatible so there the inlet and outlet are off and here's a little Mickey Mouse here, Just pull that off put it in a place where you don't lose it and then pull up and then try not to uh, lose the clamps down on the tongue belt or anything like that that could be bad and there's a screw here with a clamp you just undo that And then the filter just comes right up. This is a, a good filter, so uh, we're just going to put it back in. It's important to use a good quality filter. Uh, we cut these apart all the time to see what's inside of them. And literally some, there's almost nothing inside the filter. It's pretty much empty. But uh, these are pretty good. It's almost constant filter media. And then there's a space on the bottom for the water separator. Uh, what we do is we um, drain the filter into a clean container so you can see what comes out of it and that way you can tell what's in the tank. Um, so this is a good filter, we're going to put it back in. Get it positioned uh, fairly correctly, the hose is pointing the right direction, retighten the clamp. And then on the fuel return thermostat, there are some O-rings here. Uh, you should always replace those O-rings when you change the filter. Otherwise, you can have an air leak, and that would be a difficult to diagnose uh, problem. And uh, I always like to uh, lubricate it to, uh, so it'll slide in without ripping. Put it in. It should thunk all the way down. Put the Mickey Mouse clip back on. And then uh, these clamps wear out, and uh, you know air leaks are our enemy, so we uh, replace them with some clamps that clamp the 360 degrees around the hose. Uh, most clamps only do uh, 180 degrees or so, so um, so use these or some good quality clamp. And uh, put the supply line back on. My fancy pants pliers here. It's a screwdriver or a nut driver. And then 
what we do, uh, you don't want to introduce air into the fuel system because you can, you'll get an, an airlock. Uh, that's also why you don't want to run a, uh, any diesel uh, out of fuel because you'll get air into the fuel system and it's, all, it's impossible to get out uh, on the road and very often it gets towed in. So we use a, a big vacuum pump to just suck on the outlet until fuel comes out. Uh, this one's already full, full, full of fuel. Um, or you can pour uh, some something that's ultra clean, you know, good clean filtered fuel. Don't use the fuel that came out of the filter because that's unfiltered. That's all the accumulation of crap. So um, you can either, you know, from a good fuel source into a good clean container, something that's good and clean, and just fill up. The, uh, the filter. Um, yeah, I can say don't want to introduce air in the system. You, you do that, then it'll start up, it'll quit, and then you know, you'll be in big trouble and you'll be grumpy. And then you'll want to blame me, but you shouldn't because I told you not to do that. Uh, anyhow, get this full, full of fuel, put the clamps on, uh, snug them up, don't over tighten them. We've seen people, you know, literally cut the hose in half because they had the, uh, the clamp so tight. You know, just good and snug. And then uh, we start it up and uh, run it at uh, high idle for 20 seconds or so. Uh, and that helps uh, bypass the air out of it. And, um, and then, you know, air is going to go in a loop for a while here until the fuel reaches full temperature and it returns back to the tank. Um, so don't worry about seeing a little bit of air in there. But the big thing that you want to notice is, did it change how the car ran? Pretty much any time that you, your car runs differently, the first thing you want to do is check and or change the fuel filter. I uh, just can't tell you how important that is, at how many thousands of dollars of damage we've seen from a, a plug fuel filter. See you soon.